Welcome to Beneath the Surface, presented by Rockwell. In this episode, we're in Plymouth, Britain's ocean city. Coming up, we explore how Plymouth is reinventing itself for the second time in 80 years. As the racing hots up, the twins cool down in our latest challenge. And you can win some Denmark Cell GP team gear. Cell GP returns to British shores for the first time since 2019, with the fleet of F50s racing on Plymouth Sound. Now you probably know Plymouth as one of Britain's great maritime hotspots. But there's much more to this city than meets the eye. So we're going to explore Plymouth in just 60 seconds. Starting here, Smeaton's Tower. This lighthouse was designed over 250 years ago and at the time it was a really pioneering and radical design. And it originally sat out offshore on some rocks. In the 1800s it was moved inland when those rocks started to erode. Today it still sits overlooking the Plymouth Sound. This is Drake's Island, an ancient monument formed from volcanic rock and over 400 million years old. Based just off the Plymouth coast, this place is a sea fortress and a lookout point that's been used for almost a thousand years. If you explore the deep tunnels beneath the surface of this island, you can imagine where all the armory and gunpowder would have been kept over the years. But be quick, rumor has it this place is haunted. <sighs> So we've escaped here to the National Marine Aquarium in the heart of Plymouth city centre. This is the biggest aquarium in the UK with 5,000 different types of fish. And speaking of fish, you can't say you've been to the British seaside until you try the most British dish of all, fish and chips. Hey guys, last episode we gave you the chance to win some cool gear. All you have to do is count how many times this boat appeared on the screen. And now we have a winner. For your chance to win some gear, don't forget to count the boat. Now did you know there are over 50 Plymouths in the world, but this is the original. And although it's the first, it's never been a city that stood still. We've come to Plymouth to explore how the city is adapting in the face of some of today's challenges. And we're also going to meet some of the locals who are leading it to a brighter future. We are Britain's ocean city, we're flanked by the sea and the national park that is the beautiful Dartmoor. We're the largest city in southwest England with 263,000 people. We're very much a naval city and we're home to Western Europe's largest dockyard. So absolutely we're incredibly proud of our heritage and history. Plymouth suffered badly in World War II uh, with the bombs. It was one of the worst bomb cities uh, in, in Europe. And really we're rising again on the back of the COVID pandemic. We've got the Box, which is our flagship project, the largest and most prominent museum and artifact uh, place in the country. And we're really trying to reinvent Plymouth. We want it to be a centre of excellence for the marine sector, also autonomous shipping, our leisure industries. But it's not just a lovely place to visit, but a fantastic place to raise a family and get some really, really good jobs here as well. Plymouth is changing. We're visiting the box to meet local expert Louisa Blight to understand just how Plymouth's past has shaped the city and to explore the challenges that led to one of the most radical urban regeneration projects in British history. People hear a lot about Coventry, about London, um, but actually more bombs fell on Plymouth than in the east end of London and there was you know, major sort of catastrophic effects of that. As horrific as it may sound, um, this provided a huge opportunity to clear out the city centre, to clear out the overcrowding that had been a real um, problem in terms of health and well-being. So really early on, um, sort of 1940, 1941, um, the city um, worked very closely with Sir Patrick Abercrombie to start to think about a new plan for Plymouth, which was you know, really hugely groundbreaking at the time. Um, and actually quite a few other cities, you know, including London, Bath, um, followed suit. So it really kind of set um, the pace for the nation. The plan was published in 1943, but it did take many years for it to come to fruition. The dreaded days of the Blitz are now 25 years behind us. A new Plymouth continues to expand and take shape. The 
legacy of the Abercrombie plan is that actually now, um, in this day and age, there are elements of the city which are considered of such historical importance that they're listed. The new civic centre, opened by the Queen, cost about a, one and a half million pounds and is still among the largest projects completed in Britain since the war. They are sort of living memories of um, you know, what was a really radical vision, an opportunity for change, and we're very proud um, of the, the heritage um, of the city centre. Abercrombie's plan wasn't perfect, but his ideas still stand today and form the foundations of a new, more modern Plymouth. Hannah Harris is leading Plymouth Culture, an independent arts and cultural development agency, helping Plymouth's vibrant cultural scene to flourish. So we've seen this kind of revival happening and this, I guess, growing confidence in the city. I think the whole purpose of that Abercrombie plan was, was about its structure. It was all about drawing your eye to the sea. It was about creating green spaces in the city centre. And so although the buildings are dated, those kind of principles haven't been lost. And so it gives us this opportunity to reimagine the city and reuse it in a way that isn't about levelling it to the ground and starting again. So we're looking at repurposing empty units. We're looking at how we make culture more visible on the high streets. We're looking at opportunities to get people on the water. I think post-pandemic people have appreciated uh, nature and the outdoor space more, more than ever. I think National Marine Park is really significant for Plymouth. It's going to be the driving force of our kind of city vision and plan. It's really, yes, about embracing what we have as a location, but also about conserving it. Our blue space is thriving with wildlife and greenery. LGP is the absolute perfect event for us as a city. One, it really showcases our location and we're really trying to make more of our blue green spaces as a city. So this for us fits really well, encouraging our residents and our visitors to get involved in culture and sport um, because we have plenty of opportunity as a city here. So this is the Civic Centre, it's part of the Civic Square. It was very much part of the rebuild after the war but has been empty for a good few years now, but part of a really big regeneration programme. It's very symbolic that that's about to be refurbished and actually what they're doing in terms of mixed use there with the council and Urban Splash is also important because it's bringing residential use back in, it's bringing business use back into the city centre. So again, part of that, people coming and staying and you know eating in, in the coffee shops and going to the bars and going to the theatre starts to create a bit of a buzz and, and a kind of cultural vibrancy. Another building in the heart of the city is Beckley Point, Plymouth's tallest skyscraper. I'm going to investigate how one of the city's most ambitious constructions has had to overcome a series of modern day challenges. Mark, maybe you can tell us a bit more about the Beckley Point project. It's a block of 505 uh, student flats. It started construction in 2017 and it was a real statement for the city of Plymouth um, to build such a structure. What are some of the challenges that you came across in completing the build process? Because of the fire at Grenfell, um, we, the building was already under construction, but construction got halted due to them wanting to carry out tests and examinations on the type of cladding being used on it. Our product, the rain screen duo slab, had already been installed on the building, and that meant that it was left open to the elements um, without the cladding going on it, which meant that the products were exposed for over a year. So once it was dried out, actually, they the main contractor, Kia, was able to reclad the building um, and it still maintained all the performance benefits that you would have expected if it hadn't been exposed to those elements. Our products have a really high melting point, which means they can withstand temperatures over a thousand degrees. It's really important to us that that fire safety is used on especially buildings of this nature, which contains such a large volume of people. OK, thank you, Mark. Thanks for your time. Bye. Set up. Bye. The quality of the build at Beckley is really important because it means that our students can arrive, they're very safe, they're comfortable, you know, it's great efficiency-wise, sustainability-wise. It sets an example of what Plymouth is about. Really look to the future and be a 21st century city. This event is absolutely huge for Plymouth. You know, we want it in stiff competition from other cities. You know the other locations LGP are visiting and to be mentioned in the same breath as places like Sydney um, and Bermuda is just absolutely fantastic. And the credentials and the legacy that they're going to leave behind, I think, will be a real springboard for Plymouth to embrace the sea and the water. And I think it will be a, a real showcase for the event and our city. So I'm really, really excited about it.
Now, if you watched the last episode of Beneath the Surface, shot in Taranto during the Italy Sail Grand Prix, you'd have seen an epic battle both on and off the water. We put SailGP's hungriest and most competitive twins to the test in the most Italian way possible, making pizza with a very spicy twist. Three, quattro, tre, due, uno, stop! Now, things got a little bit heated in Italy, and now we're here in Plymouth, we're going to cool things down in a big way. So we've come here to the city's iconic Lido with this pair to see if they can handle a very different kind of pressure. Okay guys, welcome to Would I Lido to you, the next challenge in the Rosendahl series. The rules are simple. Hands are Europe first, you lost in Italy. Plunge yourself into the freezing cold bath. I ask some quick fire true or false questions. If you get it right, you jump out, Lars Peter jumps in and we alternate. If you get it wrong, you have to stay in the freezing cold bath for even longer. And whoever's in there after 90 seconds, you lose. There's no doubt I will take up the challenge and, um, and stay on top. I, I don't think you can throw anything on me that I, can, I cannot beat him in, so um, keep it coming. The other uh, element to this challenge is, uh, is the questions, where you need to use your, your brain on a, under extreme pressures. And I think that's a big advantage for me, for sure. As um, I'm the smart one, you know, the older brother. Yeah. It's really cold. It's super cold. It's cold. It's really cold. Three, two, one, go. Hands, there are over 50 other cities called Plymouth in the world. True or false? False. It's true. Sorry, you got to stay in. Hans, the fastest recorded speed of an F50 is 49.9 knots. True or false? False. False. Correct, it's 51.1 knots. That's Peter. Yes. That's Peter. Rockwell insulation can withstand heat of over a thousand degrees. True or false? Uh, true. It's true. Rockwell insulation is known for fire resilience. <laughs> true. You're out, you're oh. out, you're out, you're out. Hands in. Oh. Quick, 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 quick. Hands. Plymouth Football Club is known as Plymouth Argyle. True or false? False. It's true. You've got to stay in. <laughs> Hands. <laughs> the 50 knot record was broken the last time Cell GP true. came to Great Britain. True. It was broken by Australia in 2019. Oh, yes. Peter, fires today develop three times faster than they did 60 years ago. True or false? False. It's false, it's six times faster. Hands. Oh, come on. Hands, yeah. Drake's Island, just over there. It's formed, out of, it's formed out of volcanic rock. True or false? False. It's true. Come on. And the <laughs> island is said to be 400 million years old. Hands, the crew weight limit on board the Cell GPF 50 is 438 kilos. True or false? False. It's true. No, it's 437.5. It is uh, false. I'll let, it you, is I'll, false. Let you, I'll let you off with that one. LP, get in. Stop. Yeah, Last pizza. Uh, I got you. I got you, John. I got you on one. That was wrong. 437.5. That's annoying. <laughs> that that's the one that decided it. That's really annoying. <laughs> No, what, what can I do? Okay, after some deliberation and a check and, I a, can, protest. and a protest, <laughs> I can proudly announce that the winner of challenge two is... Hans Christian. I, I took it. It's coming home. It's Has coming it ever home. been home? Has <laughs> it ever been home? <laughs> That's the question. It's, uh, <laughs> it's one all. What's your reaction? I just move on. Move on. I think the reality is that you were more exact than I was, and the, uh, the final answer was, <laughs> we've checked it, and it is correct. I, so, uh, I don't know who says more about it, but I got most correct, and he got more wrong. That's the win. It's all about timing. Yeah. <laughs>Okay, that's all for Beneath the Surface in Plymouth. As you can see behind me, there's a lot of work going into the Denmark LGP Team F50 to prepare it for racing this weekend. You can check out all the action by heading to sailgp.com forward slash watch to find out what time it kicks off in your country. And in the meantime, make sure to check out episode one of the Denmark LGP Team documentary. That's on Rockwell's YouTube channel. We look forward to seeing you in Aarhus at the next event. Expectations, you know, are 
are the same as they always been. Long term, we want to win the CLGP. We just get too high out of the the exit, flying too yeah. high. So um, yeah, we uh, we crash and um, and the, uh, the bow speed there is, uh, is damaged, so we have to abandon the race. But um, yeah, we gave it a good shot. The level in this speed is just super high. Shit, we can't do this shit. We gotta be better than this.